Relation of the encircled Allied army to Air Marshal Hermann Göring. But bad weather grounds the air attack, and again, the destruction of the Allied army stranded on the beaches is delayed. To save the Allied army, a British armada comprised of every conceivable type of floating vessel, including many civilian craft, ferries back and forth across the channel for nine days. Many are hit by German planes now trying to make up for lost time and bad weather. In the end, a third of a million troops escape to England. Only 40,000 men are left behind, mostly French troops who have fought a rearguard action to slow down the German advance. On June the 5th, one day after the final troops escaped from Dunkirk, the Germans turn south towards Paris in an assault that hurls over 100 divisions into the French lines. France crumbles. Most French divisions already lost in Belgium and most of the French air force destroyed. The battle to save France becomes a humiliating rout. Seeking to share in the spoils of war, Mussolini declares war on France on June 10th. Two days later, Paris is declared an open city. On June 14, German troops march down the Champs-Élysées. France, once self-assured behind its Maginot Line, finds itself a conquered nation in a matter of weeks. With an irony lost on no one, Hitler arranges for the surrender ceremony to take place in the same railway car in which Germany had been forced to accept the terms of the armistice of 1918, ending the First World War. Under the terms of the 1940 armistice, France is divided in half. German troops occupy the entire northern half of the country, including all of France's coastline. The southern half is left in French hands, but governed by a puppet regime of Germany. Following the surrender of France, England, in one of the great ironies of the war, attacks the French Navy to keep it from falling into the hands of the Axis powers. The former allies find themselves all but enemies a scar that will take many years to heal. The French troops who had escaped to England are loosely organized into a fighting force. Its leader is a little known French general named Charles de Gaulle. Germany's success with the Blitzkrieg had surprised the entire world. The modern army of France had fallen just as quickly as the cavalry charging Poles. Nothing seems capable of stopping the Nazi military machine. With the capture of France, the war in Western Europe is over. It is an enormous victory for Hitler. Yet, in allowing the English army to escape from Dunkirk, Hitler had made one of the great strategic errors of the war. The British army rescued from the Dunkirk beaches contained most of England's experienced troops. They would fight another day. But only after the heroic battle of Britain, the first major air battle of the Second World War. As early as July 1940, Hitler had ordered secret preparations for Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of England. The plans call for first destroying the British Royal Air Force. The German air commander Goring promises to wipe out the RAF in four days and begins massive air raids against England's airfields and radar stations. are outnumbered in planes three to one, but they score kills of two to one against the Germans. With the aid of the newly developed radar, which Goring fails to knock out, 
the British know when and where the German raids will take place, allowing them to make maximum advantage of their smaller number of planes. The RAF pilot is called upon to fly multi-missions each day, going up time and time again to meet German bombers and fighters in the sky. Gradually, the German attacks wear down the number of British planes and their pilots. In the first two weeks of the battle, a quarter of the British pilots are lost, and the remainder are in desperate need of rest. Yet, just as Hitler's order to halt the attack on the Allied forces on Dunkirk had saved the British army, another decision by Hitler would cost Germany the battle for Britain. August 24th, a German squadron of bombers accidentally drops its bomb loads on civilian targets in London. Churchill orders a retaliatory raid on Berlin. An enraged Hitler redirects his air attacks from military targets to the city of London itself. It is Hitler's second major error. The blitz against London begins September 7th and continues night and day for two months. London is virtually destroyed. break the will of the British people. Instead, Churchill is greeted with cries of, we can take it, by his countrymen. The suffering endured by London gives the British Air Force the time it needs to recover, retrain new pilots, and build new planes. With England still capable of protecting its skies, Hitler postpones indefinitely the invasion of England. It is a pivotal point in determining the outcome of the war. Hitler's failure to defeat Britain would mark the beginning of the end for the Third Reich. This offers stiff resistance, and the Italian army is stopped. Mussolini's efforts in North Africa meet with even less success. By February of 1941, the Italian army fighting against the British in East Africa surrenders in droves to the famed Desert Rats. Coming to the aid of his Pact of Steel ally, Hitler sends troops into Greece and North Africa. The battle for Greece, which had stalemated Mussolini's army, readily falls to the Germans in a matter of days. Hitler also orders to Africa one of Germany's brightest commanders, General Erwin Rommel, who is soon placed in charge of the Desert War. Rommel had distinguished himself in the Blitzkrieg of France, but in Africa, he will become legendary as the Desert Fox. Rommel halts the rout of the Italian army, then counterattacks in March 1941. pushed all the way back into Egypt, placing the strategic Suez Canal in jeopardy. With these successes, Hitler has reached the high water mark of the Third Reich. North Africa and the Mediterranean are under control, while most of Europe is under Nazi rule. Only the British remain, isolated on their island and in Egypt. With this view of the world map, Hitler decides to launch his largest blitzkrieg. It ultimately will be Hitler's third and most devastating miscalculation. Operation Barbarossa is to be a surprise attack against Russia.
pre-dawn artillery barrage, the Panzers roll across the Russian border on June 22, 1941. Stalin had received numerous warnings from the Allies that an attack was likely. 